open, it, open hearing on HCR 11. Representative Itza. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, I'm Representative Dan Itza. I represent Rockingham County District 10, uh, the town of Fremont, and I'm here before you to present HCR 11. Um, I've known Jerry Delanus for a number of years. Uh, spoken at the meetings he holds up at the church in uh, uh, Rochester. And I sat next to Sue uh, the last session that she termed that she was in the house. Um, if you all remember, a couple of years ago there was a big hoopla out at the Bundy Ranch in Nevada. And Jerry DeLamas, being the type of individual that he was, uh, investigated and believed he should become involved. And he did go out there. Some months later, uh, we all got word that the FBI was coming looking for him, and a couple of other individuals in the state. They staked him out. They basically waited until they could get him alone and then took him into custody and took him out to Nevada for trial. Out of all the individuals involved, and there were hundreds uh, out of Bundy Ranch, he's the only man in jail. His charges are all involved in conspiracy, trans interstate transport of firearms, involved in a conspiracy. Everything's, everything is associated with conspiracy. All the other individuals involved were the charges have either been dropped or they've been determined not guilty. That means it was a conspiracy of what? And that's a really thin conspiracy. Jerry DeLamus would, is not the type of man who would do, who would commit a crime. And yet, he is in jail because he pled guilty because the FBI at the time were threatening to uh, investigate uh, one of their friends who was sick with cancer at the time, and they were afraid that if he were in fact uh, incarcerated for any length of time, he would probably not survive the incarceration, even if it was just an incarceration during investigation. And so to protect his friend, Jerry DeLamus pled guilty. And even when everybody else was, the charges were all dropped and they were found not guilty, they would not allow him, even though they were still in process, they had not had the final hearing they would not allow him to change his plea and go to trial. Therefore, I respectfully ask this legislature, it's a concurrent resolution, so it would go first before us and then before the Senate, to request of the President a pardon for Jerry DeLamus, because I do not believe he should be in jail, and I believe it is an affront to our state to have a man of such character um, removed from the state forcibly. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? I'm sorry, I can't talk that much. <coughs> Representative Finney. Yes, thank you. Um, is it true that between the state of Nevada and, and the uh, state of country that we have a uh, reciprocal agreement for firearms as we do with other states? Um, I do not know that positively, but I presume from the character of your question that we do. Anyone else? Representative Massimia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative, for taking the question. Um, the part about protecting an individual that was stricken with cancer, was this brought up at the first hearing? Uh, Senator Guyton would be able to answer such particular questions uh, far more articulately than myself because he was intimately involved in everything that happened. Um, going further with, with Representative Finney's question, 
If we have a reciprocal agreement with Nevada, which I believe you're indicating that we do, then interstate transport of firearms between here and there in a vehicle is not a crime. That's a federal statute. Even some states choose not to recognize it. But as long as you don't stop in a state where it's a problem, you're good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative, for bringing us forward. And I actually have a couple of questions for you, if I may. No. Um, isn't it true that uh, Jerry DeLumis here um, tried to stop his plea when he realized that the veteran or something was going on, was in the hospital, and, and he was denied? Yes. Okay, follow up. Go ahead. Um, isn't it true that uh, there were people there that everyone within the committee, I mean, that was involved with the Bundy there, had been uh, case dismissed and thrown out, out of court? That is true. Um, okay. Um, I have on the, um, I'm looking at the date. Um, a few days ago, I actually sent a message to Senator Sessions and the President through Twitter, which they read my Twitters because I'm on his team, to let them know and say uh, what's going on, you know, with Jerry Dillamis in hopes that somebody will do this. Do you know if his lawyer has filed the pardon? I do not know. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to, to give you a little background. Um, last, last year, there was a rally held on Jerry's behalf on the state, uh, state house steps uh, during the whole trial process. And a, num a, lot, a great number of individuals in that uh, rally were given form letters to send to uh, Attorney General Sessions and to his office and to the President. And what occurred to me was that being in the legislature, there was something actually unique that we could do in that we have the power as a legislature to send a message from the state to the President. And that's why I introduced it. Further questions? Representative? Pardon me, Mr. Chairman, and this might be an unusual question, but there was one part of your testimony that has confused me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you said Jerry Delamus is not the type of man who would commit a crime. Mm -hmm. But if I understand you correctly, Representative, um, you believe as I believe that there are um, many, 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 many actions in this country, in this state, which are crimes, and that basically everybody is always doing something at least slightly illegal. So I'm a little confused what you mean by the type of man who would commit a crime. Um, he is not somebody who would knowingly put himself in the jeopardy of breaking a law that he knew existed. Okay. What he believed that Very what he statement. I understand that, and, I, and I, 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 under, I understand your assessment of the situation, and I agree with your assessment of the situation. But he is not the type of man who would engage in a conspiracy against the government. Okay, it's just not his character. And I will give you an example. Um, there is a confusion, if you will, amongst what I'll euphemistically call the patriot community in that they believe that they can go out and create a militia. But if you look back historically, a militia is actually part of the government. It's under the, it's under the control of the governor. All commissions, uh, officers commissions in the militia are conferred by the governor and council. Uh, that's the way it's always been. Uh, before, in our, under our first constitution, uh, there was no governor, but the legislature as a whole was the commander in chief of the militia. There is no, there is no going out and forming a militia in the woods, so to speak. That's not constitutional. When I advised Jerry of this, because he had been thinking in the other direction, 
he immediately changed his perspective when I pointed out the reality of the situation to him. That's the kind of individual he is. Senator Guida, as I said, he's much more articulate, he, and I'll, he will obviously tell you this, but he was an FBI agent. He knows the ins and outs of what was done and what should have been done. So I would defer those kinds of questions to Senator Guida. So, so if um, seem to me that if not everyone has been tried, there is the potential that um, some may be found guilty, which would make sentence number 10 invalid when that occurs if it does. And would it perhaps be better to build a different argument in this bill uh, to support your goal? If that is true, but it's my understanding the charges, that they've either been found not guilty or the charges have been dropped. Oh. We're, only, we're only speaking about one particular charge here in aiding and abetting, or aiding and extortion. So if people were not <coughs> tried on that particular thing, it's my understanding they were all charged with the same thing. There were some over a dozen people charged with identical charges. You have a follow um, I just, I would really like to find out if sentence 10 is factual. I'm sure Representative Senator Guy has all that information for you. Representative Finney. Thank you. Um, based on your knowledge of the case and that we were only really talking about conspiracy and extortion. Has there been any uh, indication or, or or any evidence that any violent act could have or, or would have been committed in this case? To the best of my knowledge, no. Representative Belsar. Thank you. Um, isn't it true that as of today that everyone that was, uh, all the cases, there was two cases that were going on and they were different areas and they were dismissed as of, today, as of today of this legislation, they were all dismissed. Okay, the follow up is um, Jerry DeLumas, veteran Marine, did he run for sheriff in the uh, district? Uh, what district in? Uh, yes, he did, for the uh, Strat Stratton County? Stratford right. County, I believe he ran for sheriff, yes. Right. One last follow up. Go ahead. Uh, isn't it true uh, with Jerry DeLumas there? was heavily involved in like homelessness and all these different uh, organizations helping people here in New Hampshire? Um, I cannot testify that to that particular. I, I don't, I, I would, if you told me he was, I would believe it, but I do not know that he was. He was. Representative Elmer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, how much time has he served already? Uh, I believe it was actually Close to a year, he's now incarcerated uh, down in Haverhill. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, Hano. Uh, Devons. Hans, Hans, what used to be Devons. 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 Thank you. Um, and then there was a, a long, there was another six to nine months, as I recall, uh, that he was held in custody during the adjudication of the case. Representative Rollins, you have a question? And how many years does he have left? I believe about. Four. I think it was. A, I think it was a five-year sentence. Again, uh, Senator Guy would have to be better first on that. Further questions? Okay. Thank you. And we'll go with the man of all knowledge, Senator Guy. Thank you. Good morning. For the record, my name is Bob Guida. I represent no. District Two, New Hampshire State Senate. I'm here today to testify in favor of this resolution. I served my country as a graduate of the United States Naval Academy, as a Marine Corps fighter pilot, as an FBI agent, 
I'm currently my town moderator. I serve on the school board. I'm a state senator. I believe in this country. I believe in what it represents. I believe in its processes. But those processes sometimes go awry, and I don't think there's better evidence of that than the current mess at the head of the FBI, where the leadership is unquestionably compromised the integrity of that organization. I was at Bunkerville, Nevada with Jerry Delamus for a week, because I believe that when something as explosive as an issue of land rights and constitutional rights starts conflicting with the government seeking to kill citizens to exact its will for the simple reason of not paying land and grazing fees, that something more is in the story. So I picked up and I went out for an entire week, and I camped in the desert sand on the Bun Bundy Ranch at Bunkerville, Nevada. I spoke with Jerry numerous times every day. We bunked nearby each other. Jerry was de facto asked to lead this group. There was no conspiracy. We carried arms. There are rattlesnakes in Nevada. But we also carried arms for another reason. I ask you to look at the history of the interaction of law enforcement at the federal level with individual citizens or groups that might have an interest that differs from what the government wants to accomplish. I would point to Ruby Ridge, Idaho. A former friend of mine was a supervisory special agent that gave the orders to shoot Vicki Weaver, unarmed with her child on her shoulder. I offer you Waco, Texas. The use of military force against civilians, whether you agree with their ideology, ideology or not, it was the authorized use of military force against people exercising their religious rights on specious charges of child abuse that were never proven. Senator, please let's go a little too far astray. Um, there's a reason for it. Why we need this. Our job as legislators is first and foremost to protect the constitutional rights of every person in this, in this state. First and foremost, obligations to the Constitution, we swear an oath to it. And in that Constitution, we ensure justice, we ensure individual rights and freedoms. The federal government in this case has taken two years out of the life of Jerry Gaines for a crime he did not commit. There was no conspiracy. There was no hostility. Jerry Delanus, and I was with him, went to the sheriff's office to ask the sheriff to intervene, to tell the federal government to back away. We were under federal surveillance by helicopter, by trucks with long-range uh, devices. We, we committed no crimes. We simply stood up to the federal government because we didn't believe our government has the right to kill citizens because they're not following its dictates. Why do I say that? Does the name LaVoy Finnegan re re mean anything to anyone? LaVoy Finnegan was one of this group that advocated for property rights. They took an uninhabited station in the Mallard National Forest, and over the course of several weeks, the FBI plotted and then ambushed and shot an unarmed man in cold blood. Then the agents lied, and those agents are now under federal prosecution. The government does make mistakes. Those mistakes have very real consequences. Jerry DeLamus is suffering those consequences. I wrote letters to the magistrate here in New Hampshire that heard his case initially, totally ignored. I wrote a letter to the Judge Navarre out in Nevada, totally ignored. I wrote a letter to uh, the new Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions, when he was appointed. And I asked him to please review this case. I did that as a state senator because I believe that we as a state have an obligation to protect our citizens when they are wrongly, unjustly, not only charged, but imprisoned, convicted, and then the coup de grace. The charges in this case, in fact, the cases were dismissed. They were dismissed because Judge Navarre refused to introduce clearly exculpatory evidence that would have exonerated everybody from the charges to which they were facing. 
conspiracy, there was none. Inter illegal transportation of firearms interstate didn't happen. Jerry Delanus carried my weapons out. We did it in accordance with federal law every step of the way. He is neither a scofflaw nor a criminal. For that reason, I ask you to exercise your purview, protect the constitutional rights, and return Jerry Delanus to our state, innocent of any crime but serving a sentence, because he tried to help a fellow citizen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Senator. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of ask again what was a different um, perspective. Since you were there and everybody in the group was armed, was there a plan or intent to um, exchange gunfire, one, or to cause harm to any you know, federal agent, or was there knowledge from their side that they were to harm to you in this case? First question first. Never any intent, never any spoken intent. The this, this spoken and defined mission statement that I wrote for that whole, that whole gathering was the peaceful resolution of a constitutional conflict over land rights between the federal government and a property owner. That specifically was the mission we were operating under, if you want to use that term. Okay? Our goal was to keep peace and prevent another Waco, okay? to make sure that justice has it due. Consider the... the incongruity of snipers pointing rifles at men and women, of armed contractors looking to assault a family because they didn't pay their grazing fees. That is extreme. This is what we revolted from the British for, to stop this kind of thing that they were doing. Here we are in our own country with our own Justice Department going on a vendetta with charges that are groundless, violating the due process of law with a judge who refused to introduce exculpatory evidence so those agents and that judge wouldn't get another stat, and putting a man in prison for two years of his life. I know Jerry Delanus. Jerry Delanus is an activist. Martin Luther King was an activist, too. Jerry Delanus is in prison unjustly. I ask you to pass this resolution unanimously. I'm free. Chair, have you ever Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator, for taking the question. Um, it says that uh, in his plea agreement, he did this to protect another individual with cancer. Was this brought up at the original trial? I don't know the answer to that. I was not at the trial, so I can't, I can't testify to that. Uh, uh, separate question. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Senator, you also mentioned that you sent a letter to Attorney General Sessions. Have you gotten a response? I have not. Okay. Thank you. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, in, in response to the first part of your question, um, the judge refused to allow reconsideration after the charges were dropped against the other members of the Bundy family. Again. Justice is supposed to be blind. I will tell you, having been inside the federal justice system, that there is an interest in achieving stats. That's exactly the term they call it. Number of arrests, number of prosecutions, number of convictions. Okay. And, and this was specious charges, and, and, uh, and justice carried to an extreme to another level. Statistics like body count. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. For the record, uh, Jerry Delomis is a personal friend. His wife, I served with her. She was a state representative. Um, in your opinion, and, and of course I've been on this for a long time and brought paperwork and everything else forward on this case, is this an overreach of the federal government, in your opinion? Clearly. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Unequivocally. Um, Representative Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one last question for you, Senator. Um, as you were there, have you? Um, and, and not to, uh, given your background in the FBI, have you been uh, detained or questioned or, um, you know, about your involvement in this case? I have not. I will tell you that I was concerned. Uh, and, and again, knowing, understand the tyranny okay, of, of government versus the individual. Just the sheer mass of resources. How do you take the entire federal justice structure on as a single individual? 
and that's been a problem. And, and uh, that's that is a, a, a justice question that we need to face as as legislators. We need to level that playing field. You know, we may provide counsel, but is it counsel that's competent? You know, this is, but I think we need to do this first, and then we'll ask Governor Sununu if he would consider making an effort and speaking specifically to the President of the United States. Because um, that's ultimately who can pardon him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And the Senate. Thank you, <coughs> Senator. You mentioned it a little earlier in the testimony. You were also camped out the side in the vicinity. Were you also an activist at that time? I went out to see what was going on. So yeah, the press was covering this, and it just seemed very unusual. We have grazing fees not being paid, and then we have snipers and, and a standoff, an armed standoff, of which Jerry was not a part, was at that bridge that day. It was on the front page, I think, of Time Magazine. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm not sure what this has to do with this, but go ahead. Well, no, I just wanted to know, do you believe that he might have been singled out for that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because he was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. I was an officer in the Marines. Okay. We have a, a, another NCO, a, a gunny sitting at the table here. Okay, we trust our our enlisted troops. They keep us alive. They know what's going on. Jerry was a natural leader. People gravitated to him and said, "Well, you know, what do we need to do?" So we just set up the camp. That's that's what we did. That's what he did. He attempted to engage the sheriff. He went to the FBI and talked to them. He didn't get. There was no confrontation. It was, "Hey, look, how do we resolve this? We don't want people killed." That was the deal. When you were, this happened two years ago? Uh, it was before, it was uh, probably the summer before that, so probably three years ago. 2015. I think it was 2015. Okay. And the whole due process, do you feel the whole due process from the time of the standout to where it is today? <coughs> there were unfairness or not due process the as case, an FBI agent you know, as a certain member. Sure. You know. The function of the Bureau, okay, is to gain information. That's what you do. It's a form called an FD three oh two. You write, you write, you write, you write, you write, you interview and you write. So the agents do pretty much what they're told. Okay? The United States attorney is the one that decides to prosecute and sets up the strategy for the case and works with a judge, uh, as does a defense attorney. In this case, the judge refused to admit exculpatory evidence. The judge refused to reconsider his plea based on the exoneration of the other people that were convicted, that were charged but never convicted. But I'm told by those who practice in federal court, it's very, very difficult to undo a plea agreement once it's done. Okay. And so, in who was arrested as a result of the incident has been tried? I don't know the answer to that. So is it accurate that everyone's been found not guilty? The charges have been dismissed in both cases for failure of the judge to include exculpatory evidence. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying to think the question I asked before, of course, on the lawyer that Jerry had, was that a uh, lawyer that was a given to him because he couldn't afford one, or was that one that he paid for? I don't know, but I think knowing his financial status, it was a government appointed attorney. Right, one follow-up. I'm sorry. There was a question that they couldn't answer before. Do you know, do you know if the lawyer submitted to Washington already a pardon? I do not know. Okay. Further questions? No. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee. Most of what we needed to know. Uh, <clears throat> Representative Fool, I assume you've heard most of this, so please keep it short and. With the more information we need to know is better. Thank you, Chairman. Representative Holzer from the Towns of Bell and Dunbarton, Chairman Act 23, here testifying in support of this bill. Trying not to repeat what the former members have said. Um, the former representative, Susan Delanus, is a friend of mine. I watched this whole thing from the sidelines. I'm trying to share in, in personal terms the impact to them as a family by having. Um, 
locked up. At one point, they had an apartment that I walked over <coughs> and helped clean out for, and, and then repaint so it could be suitable as a rental unit to help keep the family financially afloat. Put in lots of hours actually renovating that apartment. Um, that was their former home. She moved in with her mom. This family had borne a lot to protect the rights of the citizens. While some may see this as a partisan case, we should do this for any citizen. <coughs> if a citizen is unfairly charged, and then the charge is subsequently dropped, okay, that were the core of the case, that citizen should not remain in jail. At one point, when the hearing was going on here, and then subsequently, I believe, um, when the, there was a trial out there, I authored a letter and had signed by a number of representatives of the House testifying on behalf of Sherry Delinas as a peaceful person, someone who was trying to solve a problem by going out there, okay, to act as as an, a mediator to make sure there was no no way to to quote the former person who just talked to me. We don't want to see lives lost on either side. Um, when snipers have been called in, the rules change. So I would ask that you would pass this. Um, especially in light of the finding that just this past week, uh, it's clear that none of the others are, are going to be in prison. But the one person who was called in as a co conspirator is, going to, is, is still in jail. We should do this for our citizens. Questions? Yeah. Let me ask one first. Do you have the answer to why her question about are there still people out there who have not been charged that you know of? Right. Right. Who have, who were well, been I believe all of the charges of everybody who was charged have been dropped. I will verify that and get back to the community. You just want the people that were charged or those that... So, if I could just make a quick statement. Yes, sir. Um, Wikipedia says that there is one person who pled guilty to conspiracy and there's another person who pled guilty to something else. There's been a wide variety of different results from people who have been charged. And it doesn't seem like everyone's gone through the court system yet, which is why I don't understand. I don't believe that one and is necessarily factual, and you know how smart the Senate is. Okay. So if you want this to get somewhere, just probably cross the T's and dot the I's. Thank you. I will take that as one of my actions out here to get back to the committee. Representative Belzer. Thank you. Um, I, I, did you read the, uh, the article that came out through Fox News? where it says a federal judge dismissed all charges against the Vida rancher, Clive and Bundy, his two sons, and other men, on Monday after accusing prosecutors of willfully withholding evidence from the Bundy lawyers. I, I did read, I'm not sure if I read that Fox News article, I did read a news article about it this past week. Are you also aware about that the U.S. District Judge uh, Gloria Navarro cited flagrant prosecutor misconduct in her decision to dismiss all charges against the Nevada rancher and the three others, and they were the last final people left there to be charged. I am aware of that. Not, not to belabor it out. I know, but I just been so over this. answer their questions. Yeah. Okay. I, think, I, I think the point is we understand the news, mm -hmm. I hope we all understand the news, that yes, bad stuff has been done as far as we know here. Everyone who was charged is free to go. They dropped all yes. the charges for one reason or another, I, I, with exception from Mr. Delisle. If, if I may, I, I would like, instead of using news and Wikipedia, and I'm not, this is not, it, it, okay, I would like to see if we can get something from the court relative to this case. I think that's what we need to do, and I think that's a good piece of information to have, um, because everything else is secondhand, and let's, it should not be hard for us to request from the court, right, a record of what happened at this trial regarding all of the, whatever, 14, 17, whatever, how many people were initially charged. I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I guess that doesn't reflect on this HCR. The HCR should go forward. The HCR should be considered <laughs> before we worry about some other people, were they convicted, were they not convicted. Right. We know his position. We know what he confessed to, if you will, we know what happened to the other people, so let's just consider, do we as a state, as a committee, wish to ask the president to, to give him a pardon? 
So, so I do know there's only one New Hampshire citizen currently sitting in jail, and that's the one that we're talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if my recollection serves me, uh, what I read in the newspaper was Judge Navarro, who dismissed all charges. And this is the key language. He did it with prejudice. If it's done in prejudice, then it's done without prejudice. Then they can't bring it up again. So it's a, it's, it's a, that's the end of it. Okay. If you use the term prejudice, prejudice. It says then it right. cannot be brought up again. This has been covered. I understand those, I hope people on the committee understand those positions and understand what has been done. We're interested only in do we wish to push forward an HCR to get it out of our committee, out of the House, out of the Senate, to request a pardon for this gentleman in this case. And, and that's all we are here to consider. Yes, I understand there's a lot of court proceedings that, that were involved. I frankly don't think that's a consequence as far as this is concerned. We either do this or we don't do it. We ask for a pardon or we don't. I mean, that's what we're considering here. I don't want to go too far afield. Yes, there are lots of things, lots of problems involved with all kinds of things. I mean, if you want to go into water rights, we can talk about that for hours. Hmm. Don't want to do that. So just let's, let's limit ourselves to our discussions. We're getting pretty far off the trail here occasionally. If you have anything further, anybody else? Yes, Betty. Um, question for you, um, Mr. Chair. Has there been any other case or pardon the question in the state of New Hampshire? Please be. I would have no idea. Uh, we, could, we could ask someone uh, if we need to know that. That might be relevant to our considering the uh, question of pardon. So whether we've done this before, I don't know. But we can find that out. Anything further? No. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's see. I do not have any more pink cards. I see that over there. I haven't filled it out yet. Uh, Could I talk first? Can yes. Talk first? Uh, Joe Hawes, I'll just take one minute. I wish you would. Uh, Gilmanton? <laughs> 45 seconds. I'll try to be too. Good morning, Mr. Chairman Older and members of the committee. Joe Hawes of Gilmanton. I'm just spelling your name, please. Uh, Joseph S. Haas, capital H-A-A-S, and I just have two mentions of line number one and line number 16, and also lines five and eight. One, five, and eight deal with the word conspiracy, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, I was told that the, the, the Divya case, I don't know how you spell it, D-I-M-Y-A, it was dealing with conspiracy throughout the whole country. There was decisions for and against in different circuit courts. So because of the discrepancy, it did make it to the U.S. Supreme Court. So I think some of these reasons why these people are being dismissed is because of that case. Because what you think that, that might happen is not going to really happen unless it happens. It's just a future tense thing. And I make the analogy of Dan Riley from New York. He came into the Ed Brown case up in Plainfield when Wayne Brown and he were fighting the IRS and had the compound up there. And uh, they were just, that's what Jerry DeLumis did. He just went over there, sort of like Bo Bryce of, uh, of the uh, Randy Weaver case. He was like an intermediary. He was trying to help the problem out to come to some solution. Be the middleman. Don't kill the middleman. In this case, don't even jail the middleman. You know, you're supposed to give them credit for trying to avoid bloodshed. And uh, that's the Dimiak case. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody ever said that before, but that's the reason why I think. And the last thing is line number 16 for Donald J. Trump uh, being notified. I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, even before it goes through all the process here that a nice courtesy letter uh, to him that this is going on from you would be nice because the Attorney General, Gordon McCormick, he's meeting with the, uh, he has a, the National Association of Attorney Generals is meeting, I think, in Washington. I asked him this last year. He says, uh, by usual standard operating procedure, they do invite the president to their meeting. And I said, well, when you meet with him, could you please bring up the Marco Rubio Homestead in Florida case to make it nationwide? Because like in Ed Brown's case, they should have 
you can, you're supposed to squeeze the debtor down to half their freehold, their homestead. We have a homestead in New Hampshire, but it's being ignored. And I, yeah, that's one issue. And then the other issue would, could be, well, uh, if you're going to do the uh, Jerry DeLumis case, please look into uh, the Dan Riley uh, trying to help out the Ed Brown case, too. You know, that would help him out. And he, he even says, I, I get emails from him through core links at Dan Riley. He says, oh, yeah, when, they, when the U.S. Supreme Court decides that case, we're out of here. Him meaning, uh, there was another guy, Jason Gerhardt, he came up to help, too, uh, from New York. And then there was Cyrano Gonzalez, he came up to help from uh, Texas. And uh, these guys, you know, were just like Jerry. They're, you know, they're just to help, not not to uh, go out and start killing people. Just to, you know, stand your ground. I think that has been covered several times. Okay, thank you. Questions? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't know your name, sir. Uh, oh, Jennifer Gonzalez. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, could you spell the name of the case that you're citing, the Vineyard case? Vineyard case? Well, it's a real short name, just two syllables. I, I'm just guessing. D I M Y A, Dimya. It's a uh, U.S. Supreme Court case that's going on right now. There's supposed to be a decision either it has been made in December or January or February. I don't know. Well, it must have been made already because two guys are already out because of that. Thank you. Yeah, this case. Thank you. I have no more pink cards. Anyone else wish to testify? Oh, yeah, I'll give you my card. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay, so you know what else? I'm going to close the hearing on HCR 11.